Thank you very much, Chair, and for that. Um, I, I was really concerned when this motion was referred to committee in, in November, so unusually, that, that universal basic income, a policy I've been interested in for a long time, was being kicked into the long grass by the Assembly. And I, so I was very, very pleased to see that the committee scheduled the motion so promptly. And I was really looking forward to watching it being determined this morning by members of the committee. So I, I am disappointed to hear this morning that the committee may not vote today on the actions it proposes and that it may wait and come back to it at a future date before making its conclusions um, and sending those to the Assembly. But we are where we are. Um, and before the motion is being considered today, you're going to hear evidence from our guests. And I hope after that you will decide cross-party to take this forward in a positive way. Now, I'm not here to present evidence in detail, but I will quickly talk about the context, the timing and the urgency that led Assembly Member Pigeon and I to propose it to the Assembly in November and to try to make sure that as you hear the evidence in the wider discussion, you focus on what the motion asks for specifically and how you can take that forwards. So first, the context. Um, I spoke in November about the gaps that have been exposed in the safety nets for so many people whose lives have been shattered by the coronavirus pandemic. People are anxious, worried for their loved one's health, while worried about precarious jobs and paying the bills, excluded from help sometimes, even worrying where they'll find their next meal. More people than ever are affected by insecurity and poverty today, but it's always been there. Almost a third of Londoners lived in poverty even before the crisis, higher than anywhere else in the UK. So as we work towards recovery, we need to look hard at the fundamental flaws that the crisis has exposed in our system and gather the evidence we need to fix them. And to me, the failure of our security system, our social security system, to guarantee against poverty and hunger is one of the most fundamental flaws of all. So now to the timing. Right now is when we should be working out the best way to invest in our city, in Londoners, as we build back better, a basic income could invest more Londoners with the freedom to make those difficult life-changing choices that so many people need to make, but which are only easy now for people with a private and privileged safety net. And it's clear now that now is the time for big ideas that demands leadership. Politically, local authorities of different complexions, about 20 now, have called on the government for their areas to be pilot areas for basic income, including areas run by Liberal Democrats and Greens, Labour, and also the Senate in Wales in a cross-party way supports it too. When I asked the Mayor about this, he agreed it is worth exploring the idea. He highlighted the potential benefits to women. So now it's the time for us as Assembly members to show our support for, for exploring this idea too. So to focus on the motion finally, we propose two simple things, to ask the government for a universal basic income pilot in our city of the kind that replaces welfare, and to explore testing of the idea in other ways with councils too, wherever and however we in the GLA can support it. Importantly, I think there was some confusion in the last debate here. It's not asking for an evaluated pilot of London. It's asking to make sure pilots that are asked for across the country include people in our city. And that's important because London's unique, our housing costs are uniquely high. Our population is more diverse, more, more affected by inequality. Now, you can ask our guests what they think too, but to my mind, a London-based pilot would ask several questions, involve several studies, looking at the impacts on communities in different geographical areas, in our diverse boroughs, and at different cohorts of people in our diverse population distributed around the city. And it would gather evidence on how additional payments for families, disability and age would work differently here too. And I also hope we'll hear today about how councils and the mayor could support non-government studies to learn more within our powers and funding with a different methodology than replacing the welfare system. Things like micro pilots to tell us about the benefits to particular people facing particular challenges or how a particular type of business or career could flourish with this kind of support amongst less privileged people. So yes, the studies coming from other countries, they've been so interesting and I hope you can see how passionately interested I am to test this idea, to find out more on behalf of Londoners. And I hope by the end of this morning, you too will all be interested enough to support learning what these kinds of pilots, not just further discussion, could tell us as an assembly about what's best for the people we represent. Thank you.